very good welcome to Aussie Tech Heads episode 646, 22nd of August 2019. How are you all going? Uh, it's me again, Glenn Goodman, and I'm here tonight, or this week, with Jordan. And uh, Joe is still painting his house on holidays or something, whatever he's doing, I don't, really don't know now, I'm too confused. But anyway, you can, if you want to tell, ask what Joe's up to, you can reach him at uh, Joe the Gadget Man. At, uh, or just joe at aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, you can reach Jordan at jordan at aussietechheads.com.au and you can reach me at Aussie, glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. You can find us on the Facebook at facebook.com forward slash aussietechheads and youtube.com forward slash aussietechheads. We are brought to you by Start New Company. Register your company fast, free and direct with ASIC. All docs provided and docs are held in your account for download at any time later on. If you're an accountant or other professional, you can put your little name on the, the constitution when it comes out. So you look all nice and dandy. So that's pretty cool, cool isn't it? And also ATH web hosting servers operating on SSD drives, uh, SSL certificates, domain registrations and more. Aussie Byte, 33% off if you mention ATH19 in the Fitbit app gallery when you're looking for Aussie Byte clock faces. All right. Now, what else is going on? Let's say day to Jordan. How are you going, Jordan? How are you, mate? Yeah, good. What's been I'd going on? Like that, I'd just like to say that we're also brought to you by Wirecast. <laughs> oh, yes. Do we, do we like that? It's popping up on the screen. Now, I'll tell you the story about that. Is Well, it said auto-updated, and then because I didn't pay for another year at whatever it is, that works out to be about 400 Australian, because I didn't pay for it, it uh, they just decided I'd go into a trial period. So, I don't know. I can't see why I can't stay on the, you know, I've already spent about, 800 900 on it over the years so um yeah but i just need a, a previous download a previous version and i should be right just something that works with the license i think but yeah so if you hear the uh, or if you see the wire cast all over everyone's face put up with it it should be fixed next week yeah uh yes so aussie tech heads for you we're always playing with tech and there's always something changing and there's always audio problems or there's always wire casts popping up or there's something going on there is what if we didn't have all these problems to solve well, that's right. What would we do all day, eh? <laughs> what would we do? Now, have you got any news? Anything happened to you through the week, good or bad? Oh, not really. I bought a, I bought a couple of things off eBay, and they've been giving me a bit of grief as usual. Right. Yeah. Well, it's too not... exciting in my life. I'm learning songs. I've got my head so full of songs. I've got about three bands on the go at the moment. I can't keep, can't just can't keep up. <laughs> How long does a song last in your head? Um, unsung before you forget it. Oh, I've got songs that are in my head that I've sung thousands of times that I probably will never forget. I'll probably die with those. Well, horses but, be one of them. Horses, you love it. Oh, yeah, horses now is just it's just second nature. <laughs> you get that many times and you get sick of it. Yeah, and people are requesting it and you're like, man. Mm. Do you like? And it's the same. There's a few songs like that. There's horses and Jesse's girl and K San. There's things like that that just get requested. All the time. Flat out every gig mm. and you just go with it. What about Burn and Love? <clears throat> Burn Never and Love, it. baby. <laughs> Never sang it. There is songs like you get those, you know, you get those ones that come out that last about six weeks, the new ones on the charts, you get about six or eight weeks out of them and then they fizzle out and you never hear them again. Mm. And you spend hours learning them and get them into your head, but then thankfully you don't have to remember them. Yeah, that's right. Look, I, I don't, I don't. Songs and me just don't go. Like I can sing along to them, but the the words and the meaning don't really uh, process. You know, because then someone will tell me one day, oh, that song's about such and such. I go, is it? <laughs> you know, you go, oh, okay, radio. Yeah. And then you know, that sounds like me with K. San. I, I I sing it, but I have no idea what I'm singing. My mind is thinking about fifty million other things, and I've sung it that many times. It just becomes second nature. Mm. I don't even know the words coming out of my mouth half the time. <laughs> it's the same when you sing. Like I, I remember in the old days, I couldn't do it now, but in the old days, I had to learn Eminem. I had to sing "Without Me" by Eminem, and that the, the lyrics in that are so fast that my I'm sure my mouth had a mind of its own. I just mm. blah, 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 blah. and then by the end of the song. I have no idea I even did it. Yeah, yeah, right. It becomes muscle, it becomes muscle memory. Yeah, probably. Now, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you my news through well, the, the week. Beverly Hills Cop theme song, Justin says. <laughs> <laughs> well, my news uh, is that um, my poor little Shami, I've, I've, I've put it in the cupboard. I've put it in the drawer. Uh, I've retired it. And guess what I've done? Can you guess correctly? You bought Apple. 
I went back to my old 6S. <laughs> That's right. Did you really? I did. I did. And look, I am so much happier. The whole, the whole experience is so much smoother. It's just, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm back, baby. I'm back. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and you, and what, and you're loving Apple. Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't say I'm loving the, the, the corporation, but uh, yeah, look, the, it's just a much more sleek experience on the iPhone, and apps just work better. There's more. Uh, I don't know. I find there's. Uh, yeah, it's just every, all the apps are just maybe sleeker. They're just just easier. Like I look the Xiaomi. Look, I probably I probably do the wrong thing. Yeah, it's probably because you. It's probably because you had the Xiaomi phone. If you had a good phone, like a, a Samsung Galaxy or a Pixel phone or something like that, mm. you probably would have had a completely different experience. I was going to say yeah, because the two the cheaper top, phone. Yeah. Well, the first time I delved into Android was the Samsung Galaxy. Is it, are they S nines or something or whatever they were? Something like that. The real old ones. And uh, so I got over that. Uh, but yeah, and then this. I know this was a cheap one, but. I don't know, like just even the the way that it displays everything, it's just just the display. It's just Apple was just not iOS was just nicer. So anyway, I'm I'm back in the iOS town. And I what, had a bit of a a bit of a chuckle with my son today because we were talking about music when you download like music to your phone or something um, that you could, or you know, you on on. I don't know if it's still the case on Apple, but on Apple, if you if you downloaded music, you had to download it to both. Like if you had two apps to play music, you'd have to download music to both apps. You could uh, right. Apps. As it like what for music that you've got on the phone or what do you mean? Streaming well, music? Because there's no, there's no way of, uh, there's no way. Cause there isn't everything locked up so tight. You can't share files between. Yeah. If it's MP. Maybe. Things yeah. have probably changed now since I've used an Apple. So. Well, what, well, obviously, well, I think with the, streaming music that's pretty you know so streaming music is probably a different kettle of fish these days because you, you know you stream it for every from wherever you want well you know any sort of file if you have files in you know, <coughs> one drive yes yep yep mm-hmm. yeah look yes i think that's an issue uh but i think cuz iPhones will probably only play i um mp4s is that right unless you've got some program that'll like vlc or something like that uh, look i haven't come across too many issues at the moment I know the issues that they they existed before I went to Android, but uh, look, there's a bit of a conflict between Chromecast and AirPlay. Uh, you know, so, some devices I've got to Chromecast to, some devices, or the same device I can, some of them, I've got to AirPlay to, and they're different ways to get there. But overall, I think it's just much nicer. I'm, I'm happier. Uh, but anyway, so that's my little... <laughs> That's my little thing. So I'm waiting for the, the Apple event in September. I'll see if the more more come out to make the existing ones cheaper, and I'll go and update to something. Well, I, I heard I, I read or half read an article today while looking for stories saying that there's talk of the um, iPhones or the rumours are getting more and more common of the iPhones being compatible with the Apple Pencil. Right. Well, that'll be a turn up for the books. Why would they be doing that though? But that why like I wonder. I suppose just to compete with uh, to compete with Galaxy, I suppose, and uh, Galaxy Notes and things like that with the pen. But the the iOS is compatible with Microsoft Pencil, so he said. Yeah, they're they're talking about making. Um, there's been rumours that they're talking about making the iPhone com- compatible in the next coming versions of the iPhone com- right. com- with the Apple Pencil. Oh, the Apple Pencil. Sorry, I thought you said a Microsoft Pencil. No, right. no, no, an Apple Pencil. Right, oh, that makes right. sense. The Apple Stars, yeah, yeah, right, yep, yeah, cool, yeah. Yeah, that makes a bit more sense than Microsoft Pencil. Oh, when, where was that going? Uh, yeah, all right, so... Um, well, they're already yeah. dipping their fingers into Samsung, so they may as well dip it into Microsoft while they're there. Yeah, oh, everyone's dipping in everyone that was, these that days. That was another article I read about Apple today that they've, um, they're trying to buy screens from another company that they used to get their, their LCDs off, their OLED screens off. They right. Said, much so much into Samsung with their screens. Mm. You know, it's Apple phone, but Samsung's provide their screens. Yeah. Well he's, you know. Well it's talking about screens and all that sort of stuff. Uh, apparently millions of old gadgets, as you could imagine, are just, you know, thrown in drawers and under the house and maybe in tins and buried in the backyard from people. Now a study in the UK uh, uh, estimated that as many as forty million unused gadgets are in UK homes alone. 
So, yeah, yeah so where, where this story is going is each device contains multiple ver- valuable and increasingly endangered elements. So this organisation carried out an online survey completed by more than 2,000 people. So again, you know, great, uh, great breadth of, <laughs> of uh, respondents, which revealed that half the UK households had at least one unused electronic device and 45% of homes had between two and five. Most people admitted they had no plans to recycle these devices. So I don't know about you, but I've got them everywhere. I've got, oh, same. Yeah, I've just got them everywhere. Like I've got. Well, just, I think you think about the amount of money you spent on them, and you think, "Well, I get rid of it," and you end up holding on to it. Mm, like they well, really are worthless, aren't they? Yeah, so I've got like uh, little old phones. Now I've got a Xiaomi that's in the drawer. I just said that, didn't I? I did that. I put him in the drawer, retired him. Um, but what do you do with them? Like they still work. So, well, you know, if they're recent enough, they still Isn't work. Is there a recycle place you can drop them off to or something? Yeah, so that's that's the go. That's what they're saying is you you ring up your local recycle place and see if you can um, get them recycled. I'll see if I can get that web page up. Oh, look, it's a bit... Uh, no, that's no good. Let me push it in like that. There we go. Oh, nothing's working tonight. Nothing's working. Hang on. There, that looks a bit... That looks as much as we're going to get, I think. Does that work if I push that over there? Oh, look at that. Why doesn't that work? All right, yeah, so... I'm going to make that really small. There you go. Yeah, so um, that's the, that's the article there. Yeah, so look, the metal, the metal that's in them, I think we've sort of had this the bit of this discussion before, but there's a metal indium is used, and it's a unique tin oxide element, which is vital for touchscreens because it conducts electricity and is transparent. It's transparent. It's also used in solar panels. There's another mineral tantalum, highly corrosive resistant metal that is perfect for small electronic devices like our phones, also perfect for hearing aids. Uh, science estimate that the indium and tantalum mines, among others, could run out within a century. Now, everything's running out. Um, there's also other little minerals. as gallum, gallium, used in medical thermometers, LEDs, solar panels, telescopes, possible anti-cancer properties, arsenic, used in fireworks, wood preserver, silver, and uh, yttrium, used in white lead lights, uh, camera lenses, and can be used to treat some cancers. So there's a lot of little minerals there, and apparently they're running out. So the idea is recycle everything and uh, do the do the world a favour. Do it on Earth Hour. Go and recycle it. Yeah. But I don't know. Does that, you know does... The more we can recycle, the better, huh? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I guess in so. Every, in every shape or form. You know? Yeah, I think like as long as you don't, you got to look at the, uh, I don't know, the offset, haven't you? Like, you know, you hear that, uh, you know, the, to recycle a whole garbage truck full of plastic costs more energy uh, than it is just to make it again. So you know, you hear the story, you hear those sort of stories, and you think, well, is it is it good or is it bad? But I don't know. If we can do it cheaply and efficiently, I'm in for we it. We need to do it efficiently. We need to do it either way. I think people get worried about expense and. And so they should. I'm worried about expensive, you know. Mm. But. Yeah, but it's not just the. I, I guess it's not just the expense, but the expense comes from like, say, I don't know, other, uh, say, I don't know, burning coal to make the electricity to recycle the plastic. You know, the, the carbon footprint would be less to make the plastic from the scratch rather than you know trucks to go out, pick it up, bring it back, send it to China, blah blah blah. But anyway, uh, but yeah, recycle makes you feel good. China's not going to take it anyway. They reckon, yeah. No, they've uh, they've bailed on it, haven't they? They've brushed us. Yeah, they get, they're getting sick of the dirty nappies and the things that they find in the recycle bin that just aren't really. That- <laughs> yeah, well, I, I remember it's years. True, ago. I mean, everyone wonders why they've got a big recycle bin and a small rubbish bin. It's you know, it's, well, you shouldn't fill your rubbish bin if it's not full of recyclable. You shouldn't fill your rubbish bin. No, I said you shouldn't fill your rubbish bin. Right, like I see. A, yeah, we never fill ours. I mean, we were only a family of four, but we never fill ours because we recycle. Mm. Yeah, we've got the two bins. I think, yeah, our bin, our general waste bin, um, probably three quarters. See people with overflowing bins, yeah. But nowadays we take, you know, like the kids pick up the cans and the plastic bottles and recycle them anyway for money, for 10 cents. So, yeah. you know, they, <laughs> I've got more plastic cans and bottles around here than I did have before. They're, they're bringing them from in the street. They're hoarding them. I was watching it at... An online video the other day. They reckon the smart, 
the, the smart recycling factories are getting really good now. They've got the, the robotics with the smart AI intelligence that's been thrown into these recycling centres to, mm. to try and separate all these items because they say the amount of people that, you know, get hurt in these places when they're sorting them out and get stabbed with things that shouldn't be in yeah, right. stuff like that. These machines can do it in half the time and they can what's rubbish and what's not. Do you, do you have the 10 cent recycle down there? Um, I think so, probably. Mm. Yeah, look, it's pretty good. Good pocket money. Like, I guess, again, by the time you go, you know, take the kids down there and spend an hour down there because uh, you've got to separate it into cans, uh, cans and plastics and then glass then you know it takes about an hour it's probably economics is probably not really worth it but it's good for the kids to do the pocket money thing and and get moving yeah all right oh, we used to the, the way we used to we used to make money as kids was to return the shopping trolleys <laughs> oh yes yeah i used to <laughs> i used to do aluminium cans when you could squash them we used to go down to coles and Haggle the old ladies and say, "Can we take your trolley back for you?" <laughs> yes. take Twenty cents out of it. Yeah, right. Now well, I've got one of those little things. I was look little uh, two dollar. It takes us that many trolleys to buy a pack of spikes. I will tell you. <laughs> look, I got that's a little <laughs> um, a little token. Oh yeah, you get these little yeah, tokens. Those, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you won't be getting any two dollars out of me, kiddies. You'll be getting the token, little smiley face token. Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, what well, else? That was when the, that was when a pack of fifteens was worth about a dollar eighty, I think, back then. Right. <laughs> what brand? Cigarettes now, you wouldn't even want to smoke. No. Well, they were PJ fifteens, I think they were. Oh yeah. Dollar yeah. eighty a packet. Right. 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 Dollars, about three dollars fifty for a pack of thirties or something. I gave them up years ago. Don't don't mm. smoke. But I don't know how anybody could afford to in this day and age. It's what are they about two bucks each, something like that? Oh, easily, yeah, yeah, right. Because fifty bucks, near on fifty bucks a packet, I'd reckon these days for a packet of what thirty or twenty or what? Yeah, whatever they are. I don't, I don't smoke anymore. Yeah. I wouldn't even know. But it'd yeah. be a problem. I would imagine they'd be up around the fifty mark for a pack of smokes. Wow. Yeah. So it's about bucks, 50 bucks or somewhere. So it'd be an easy dollar fifty a smoke. Oh, yeah. easily. Yeah. Right. Yeah, geez, that's a lot of money. Uh, I'd rather have a uh, a beer, but then you go out there, little bloody eight bucks a scooby now, aren't they? What the hell? And if you go and buy it in a pub, yeah, like, the, yeah. Well, if you go and buy it in some, I remember buy it last the last drink I bought in a pub. I think I bought a Jack Stubby. It cost me about thirteen fifty. What the hell's a Jack Stubby? Oh, Jack, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels Stubby. Right, right. How much? It was about- about thirteen fifty, I think it was. Yeah, that's right. that'd be about right. Well, a beer stubby's probably well, Scooby's about uh, eight, so a stubby might be about nine. And um, yeah, those little Crazy. yeah, I know, it's just stay at home. Yeah, all right. Um, you got any got anything you want to tell us about this week? Um, I kind of randomly grabbed all my stories at the last minute, but while we're on to Apple, I wanted to have a bit of a a bit of a laugh. There's been a bit of a stir up about the the um, the credit cards. Right, what's happening there? I don't know if you've read any stories about it, but Apple's released um, a, a cleaning instructions for your card. <laughs> oh, my God, have they? <laughs> because apparently it it won't look very classy when you pull it out of your wallet. So it won't damage any of the electronics or anything like that, but it it, it the, the, the colours will fade and all those sorts of things. And they're kind of saying that... You shouldn't put them in, in, in a leather wallet and they shouldn't be next to any other cards. That You should put them in a, oh. in like a, a protective bag or something. You carry it around. <laughs> oh I couldn't stop laughing at it. I'm thinking it's supposed to go in your wallet. Yeah. It's supposed to be next to other cards. Yeah. You're not supposed to pull it out and clean it with a microfiber cloth every couple of days so that when you pull it out in the shop, it can look really classy in so, front of it. So these things mustn't – do these have an expiry date? I'm just reading. So they're titanium. So they're not plastic; they're like a metal. So you wouldn't be imagine that Apple's going to be sending them out too often. No. Yeah, there you go. How to safely store and carry your card? Because <laughs> they say that it'll wear. So yeah. gent- gently wipe the cloth with the Microsoft cloth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, with a, <laughs> a, mic- a microfiber. <laughs> Sorry, here I'm saying a Microsoft cloth. That would make sense, wouldn't it? That'd be funny though. Don't place your card in a pocket or bag that contains loose change, keys, or potentially abrasive ob- objects. How to request a replacement titanium Apple card. Well, now much they are. Open your iPhone wallet, blah, 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 um, to report the status. I wonder if they just send them out for free. 
how to unlock your card, how to lock your card. There's a lot of instructions up there. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah. There I you. think it's amazing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have a chuckle because, you know, I mean, really, I don't even think you need one. But anyway, what yeah. do you need? You get 1% daily cash on every purchase you make with a titanium card. What's that mean? 1% daily cash. See how you get a see how to get a percentage of every Apple Card purchase back as daily cash. When you buy something with Apple Card, you get a percentage of your purchase back not a month from now, but every day. There's no limit to how much daily cash you get, and it automatically goes into your Apple Cash account so you can use it just like cash. Wow. There you go. Get 3% back on everything you buy from Apple. If you buy it from the Apple Store or Apple.com, 2% back every time you buy something using Apple Pay. And if you happen to come across a store, website or app that doesn't take Apple Pay, you use your titanium card and get 1%. Right. Okay. Something for nothing. But I bet you they charge a bloody annual fees and stuff, do they? I don't know much about it. Do yeah, that's how they probably get it back. Mm. They give you the give you the percentage back and then charge your monthly fee and then it's kind of really just a yeah yeah it's not something really like kind of wipes it out probably not something I'm going to go in for I'll th- I'll stop at the iPhone I just think <laughs> it's funny that they say you shouldn't you shouldn't put it in leather wallet and it shouldn't be near denim and because it might turn blue or black from your denim and um, you shouldn't um, you shouldn't put it next to any other cards so it's- where are you supposed to store it well. On your person, maybe, in a nice... Where am I going to... If I can't put it in my wallet next to my other cards, mm. am I going to carry it around in a separate bag on my back? Well, who knows where you're going to put it. Maybe you got to put it in your pants somewhere. <laughs> well, that's the kind of the whole the whole thing I kind of laughed at is like... Where do you put it? Where do you put it? If, if you know... You'd be able to, you'd be able to clean your Apple card on your... It's supposed to go in your wallet head. on the cards. You'd be able to clean your card on your head. Here we are trying to get rid of cards and go digital. <laughs> and now they want to add a card that you can't carry with your other cards. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's a bit, bit uh, cray-cray, but anyway. Uh, in- it. Yeah, Instagram adds a tool for users to flag false information. Fake news. It's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Instagram has announced it will add an option for users to report posts that they think are false. So I can guess it can see this getting abused. Posting false information is not banned on Facebook or Instagram, uh, but the company is taking steps to limit the reach of inaccurate information and warning and warn users about disputed claims. But like, oh, I don't know. It's a lot of work for them, isn't it? You know, like if you if you have a beef with someone, you just keep tagging them as fake or something. Like, yeah, that's a. It's a, it's a long hard road. I think they should just let it all should just let it all hang out, and then you know if you if you're worried about fake news, we'll just go to a well a proper news site <laughs> if they still exist. Um, I don't know. What do you do these it's days? It's a bit of a it's quandary. Never ending. It's yeah. never ending because you've got all the um, or you know like every time you turn the TV on, you've got one channel saying the other one's bias, and that channel saying the other one's got a bias happening. You say, Well, where do you go? Where do you look? Where do you go? Where do you get your news? You just got to sort of muddle through it and just make it up and hopefully come out could, with the right info at the we end. We could be reading fake news every week. Well, we could be. This might be a hoax. Instagram adds this tool. I will believe it when I see it and not before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it um, could be. yeah, look, I think, oh, yeah, I don't know. That's probably a bit hard, isn't it? A bit tricky. Certainly is. Uh, what else, Jordan? A little quick one. Sorry, I'm scoffing Gaviscon so fast at the moment. That's right. Well, I'll, I'll go on with one. Uh, Telstra is up against their toughest MBN challenge yet. Apparently, they've shed 1.4 billion in net profit. So that's quite a quite a bit, isn't it? Let me get this story. Fully up here, so I can show you guys on the screen. If you're on the video, there we go. Now, what's what are we saying here? Yeah, net profit. Oh, hang on, bring that I over there. I thought profits were down last week when I read. Yeah, they are. Yeah, revenue dropped three point six percent to twenty seven point eight billion for the financial year ending June thirty. Uh, net profit uh, had the biggest fall, falling one point four billion. 
uh, to $2.1 billion for the year. Since at least 2016, Telstra has blamed its financial woes on the construction of the MBN. Uh, added, but then you know, so they've lost all this money. They've lost 1.4 billion, but then goes on to say that they've added 378,000 net retail postpaid handheld mobile services uh, in the financial year 19, bringing its customer base to 8.2 million. They've added 107,000 new fixed line rental uh, retail and data services, so bringing the number of those services to 3.7 million. So they mustn't be. That sort of contradicts that, it's, that they're losing the money through the uh, NBN. But I think they'd have to be, wouldn't they? Like, how many people have ditched them, you know, since the NBN yeah. came out? Like, so, but if, it's not, if they're not losing it... Then there was that story you were reading about um, the other week that they were saying they want to leave the fastest NBN for businesses. Yes. Yeah, well, that's yes, right. Well, this is their wholesale, or the NBN wholesale... Uh, mode i think yeah where that all the wholesale people wanted to yeah do the 140 and bump the price up i guess and just keep it for the businesses and keep the normal consumers down at uh well 60 20 or whatever it is 50 20 or something like that yeah uh, but yeah i don't know so I, I think that might have been kicked under the rug i haven't heard about that for yeah, a little I would while think so. I mean, if they're losing revenue why would they cut off all the consumers and leave it for business only mm. but th- that's that's mbn not telstra like Telstra buys no. from MBN, so yeah, okay. yes. Sorry. But I think, but the problem with the Telstra is that, like you know, like with the, with on with Aussie Broadband, right? So my speed is uh, what? What am I on? A hundred and hundred down, forty up, and then yep. I consistently get about ninety five, thirty five. Uh, but and that's for a hundred bucks a month. But you go across to the Telstra, and that sort of speed's not even in there their main plans, it's an add-on that you've got to spend like another 20 or 30 bucks to get to, you know. Yeah, and like, I, do, I do. I spend it every month. What, the extra? Are you with Telstra? Yeah. Why don't you ditch them? Well, I spend it, I spend, uh, what is it, the, the normal fee, and then I pay the extra 25 or 30 bucks mm. or whatever, which has been halved, I think. I can't remember. I haven't looked at the plan for so long mm. to have it up to a hundred megabits. Yeah, right. And I get and I get about seventy six. And and your what technology fibre to the curb? Node. Right, well, you should be getting faster than seventy six, shouldn't you? Oh, to the node. Sorry, yeah, to the node. Yep. Yeah, to the node. Yeah, so it's what... actually probably reasonable. And they mm. they did offer me. They said, "Do you want to? Um, you know, you're not getting a hundred. Do you want to drop your?" Um, you know, do you want to drop your plan down to the to the lower speed because you're not getting a hundred and get the guaranteed over fifty? I'm like, but then I'm like, I'm only going to get up to fifty. I'm not going to get up to a hundred. Mm. But then, so I said, no, I'll just keep it, thanks, because I still want the seventy six. But then the thing will be like, what's in the word guarantee? You know, get you get them to explain that. What does that mean? So if one day I switch on and I don't get fifty, will I get that month for free? You know how yeah, you should, shouldn't you? Yeah, but they'll yeah, be. Lose, yeah, here they are losing too much money, as you say. They're not about to give away too much for nothing. No, there'll be a lot of <laughs> a lot of detail in that word guarantee. There'll be a lot of detail. There'll be something like, oh, oh no, absolutely. you know, third parties have got to agree that it was down to forty six for three and a half hours on for three days in the week, and you know, and um, that the spoons are up the wrong way with the forks and blah blah blah, and all this has got to happen before it's uh, the guarantees paid out. <laughs> That's for sure. That's like, <laughs> yeah, it's rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. So, well, why don't you switch to Aussie Broadband or something? You know what? I've not even looked. Um, mm. Probably just because over the years I've, and I think I've said this to people before, over the years I've changed mm. and tried other companies, but I've always ended up going back to Telstra every time. And I well, don't know whether does Telstra supply a lot of these other companies. Well, they used to. Their best service for themselves or not? I don't know. But. Well, they used to. But I think now with the MBN, see, there's Telstra a lot of, doesn't supply it. So yeah. they're, well, there's a lot of, you know, port blocking and all sorts of things going on. Mm, driving mad. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'd have maybe a look. look. Maybe it's worth another look. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you go with Aussie Broadband, tell them I sent you and we'll both get 50 bucks. That's that's my incentive to, to keep talking about Aussie Broadband, you see. So what do you know about your Aussie Broadband? Are they, um, you know, what, do they block ports or anything like that? Oh, because you've got special things going on, haven't you? Um, well, not as far as I know, but I don't have special special things going on at my place. So, yeah, I like having my own little servers and stuff running. 
Yeah, yes. Uh, yes, well, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah, servers and things like that. I don't see why they would because, you know, if you're operating a business, you're quite possible you'd have a server. Well, look, you know, for me to get an IP address, I had to pay another extra, an extra 10 bucks with Telstra to get a, a static IP. So did, yes, well, I did too. Yep. 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 But then with Aussie Broadband, I don't know, you know, like yes. if you go to IINet, I'll turn around and they tell you you've got to be on the business plan to even have that feature. Right, right. Yeah. So well, then you, and then it costs you even more. Right. Get the extra static IP for ten bucks. So right. there's all these little mm. issues way that have to be resolved before I can jump ship. Yeah. Well, you t- uh, t- send me a list. And you of know what? what after problem is too. You ring up these companies and go, "Hi, I'm just ringing up inquiring. Do you know anything about whether the port's blocked or whether you get static IPs?" Yeah. Oh no, so we don't know what you're talking about. Oh no, look, Aussie. <laughs> you got no idea half the Aussie, time. Aussie broadband. I don't want to keep banging on about them, but you don't speak to overseas. You speak to Australian. That's, 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 look, ring them up. You'll be, you'll be going, mm, I need doesn't to know more. whether they're Australian or whether they're, they're Indian. The, the problem is, is that half the time they don't know. And that, that the, too. But these guys do. To the, techni- to the technical questions. These guys do. They're good. They're good. And I'll, I'll be, if anyone out there's had you're a bad experience, you're probably technical. yelling at me, aren't you? <laughs> you're even slightly technical. You feel like ringing them up and saying, can you move me up a, up a step in the level of support? Because mm. explaining stuff to you is driving me crazy. Yeah. They don't. You've got to go through the motions. You've got to start at the bottom level and then work yourself up another level until Oh, you... yeah, I know. But it happens... You get someone that understands what you're talking about and it drives you bananas. Yeah. yeah. It just must be something about these big companies. Because I uh, I was looking for just going, you know, just doing me homework, making sure I'm on the best thing with backing up, um, you know, my web servers and stuff like that. So I thought I'll, I'll have a look at this Acronis. You know, they've got a, a plug-in that does the account backups and all this sort of stuff. So, okay, so I spent about... 15, 20 minutes just trawling through their website, uh, Googling where's the plug-in, blah, blah, blah. Couldn't find it. So then I had to, So then I thought, stuff it, I'll contact it. So I sent them an email, and then it comes back, yeah, what are you, you know, blah, blah, what are you after, blah, blah. And I yep. said, well, I'm after this. And she goes, oh, you're in, no, no, I think I might have ra- rang her email, I can't remember now. But anyway, I got to the first stage. I had to go to another department because that what I was looking for um, wasn't dealt with the contact point that was given to me on the web page. So I went to another department and we went on for about another 20 minutes of what I wanted to do. And she goes, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Put me to someone else. And that just went on and on and on. I went through about five different email addresses and then got to the one, one of the last times I heard from them was I think I got put onto a reseller who resells the stuff. And I'm thinking, yeah. it's too much. And by that time, I, I'd just gone, I, I looked up uh, something I was, I had my other, my other eye on, was Jet Backup. I thought, you know, it's just easier and simpler, you know. Because I, I don't know about you, but like, you know, you only get so many minutes in a day. So you think, okay, back up. For the next half hour or whatever, I'm going to look up my backups. So that half, or exp- half hour expires, and you might not get to it for another two months or something, if yeah. ever. And you uh, get stuffed around by other people. Yeah, yeah, and you just you just need to move on, okay? You just need to move on. And so that's what I did, and I sent them an email and told them. But, yeah, wherever it comes from, I think... But this is why, this is why I say I stick with I stick with the, what I know, with the company I know that works, and I just do everything myself. I find mm. that there's a problem with the backup, I'll fix it myself, I'll do it, because yeah. I'm doing my own. Mm. Well, send me a... Uh, send me a list of ports and I'll uh, and I'll I'll run oh, them on. Just, the, just the usual you know ports server ports that you might think of mm. did you hear about the C panel pricing changes <laughs> no oh well then you're gonna go back to uh, virtual min now are you <laughs> oh, no but um we'll I'll, do, I'll just really quickly because this is probably a bit niche but uh, the cPanel, right, which runs your web server, uh, was about I don't know maybe one license was a uh, I don't know twenty bucks. A month or something, you know, for your for your server. But now what they're doing is they're going to start charging you per account on that server. And so, let's say it's taken, so it's taken some people, some web hosts, up from say twenty bucks a server, up to possibly a couple hundred bucks a server. Depending on how many, yeah. Yeah, how many servers or sub servers. Yeah, so it's all going on, and uh, yeah, webmin's getting a pretty bit of a mention. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a freebie. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's the same with you know. It's the same with these backups. You say you ring around trying to fix your backup. So I just, mm. you know, I just run my own. Yeah. Well, it wasn't well. Well, that's what I was trying to do is is run a backup. But I wanted to, I wanted to have a, a nice, uh, easy way of doing it. So the the actual 
client, you know, the ATH web hosting client can jump in and, and retrieve their own backup and all this sort of stuff, and then restore their own backup if they had to. But um, they, this uh, Cronus did it, but to get to the actual thing, it was too hard. I just yeah. I brushed it. Ridiculous. Yeah, so it's just too hard. But anyway. It is. What else have we got? I've got um, – oh, there's uh, – oh, I've got a couple of – this is a funny one. This is not a big one either. I've got all short stories tonight, which is good. But um, – there's been a problem with YouTube. Um, in the latest example of the need for further human moderation, YouTube's automated system took down several videos after mistaking robot fight, uh, robot fighting as am- animal cruelty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm stumbling my words. Uh, the, the effect including, uh, what was it? Those affected, including some battle bot contestants, received a message stating content that displays the deliberate uh, infliction of animal suffering or the, the forcing of animals to fight is not allowed on YouTube. Mm. Was this a mere glitch or are the robots gaining empathy for their... <laughs> oh, look, that's a good show though, isn't it? You, do you watch those robot wars or whatever they call them? No, but I've seen, you know, a few YouTube videos <laughs> yeah. here and there along the way. Yeah, and they're kind of funny. And, and so YouTube has apologised, obviously, and said that they'll that they'll assess the situation and get everybody's videos back up. Mm. But I just it's amusing oh. that they think robots are fighting is animal cruelty. Yeah. Look, I'll, I'll just play one on the – I'll play one on the video so I'll get a takedown. Woo. <laughs> there we go. But they, <laughs> I don't You're, know what that little – Double for animal cruelty now. Be careful. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but look at that. Yeah, that's a pretty good show. I think it's on Foxtel somewhere. Um, yeah, what, what's this one bloke, one Twitter, one tweet goes, Today's a sad day. Robot builders across the world cried out in agony as YouTube's algorithm falsely identified personal videos of robot sport as animal cruelty and cockfighting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you can't have cockfighting on the YouTube. That'd be. No, you did not have any sort of animal fighting at all. No, no, no. no. Any sort of animal cruelty is, is not allowed anywhere, not even on Facebook or any of them. So, no. Oh well, I'm, gl- I'm glad the, that I'm glad there's I won't be seeing any the more of that. The fact that they're robots and they think that the, you know the robots are getting you know mm. we've got to start being more cautious of the robots. <laughs> now the the world's oldest webcam, can you believe it? The world's oldest is to be switched off. Did you know there was an oldest? I suppose there had to be, didn't there? But yes, it, it's going to be fixed off. It's called the fog cam. And look, I'll see. It's if probably I'm... slowing down the whole internet. <laughs> probably on a Windows eight machine. Uh, look, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, I've got it here. There we go. Not much happens. We're probably all, we're probably all sitting waiting for the upload from it. Now, oh, is that the bottom? I can't show you. That's as much as I can show you. There you go. So not much is going on. Hang on. I'll see if I can squeeze that window down, move it on up there. No, I still can't show it to you. Whoa. That one doesn't work. Uh, put that up there. Pull that down there. Can you see it now? No. No, that's all you're going to get by the looks of it. Pull that down, push that up. There you go. It's all, oh, I wish it had stopped doing that. I hate that window. We get the, we get the idea anyway. It's a yeah. fog. All right. So it's the uh, the world's oldest continuous working fog webcam is being switched off after 25 years. It was set up in 1994 to watch how weather changed on the San Francisco State University campus. It was broadcast almost continuously since then, barring regular maintenance and, you know, the re- occasional repositioning and all that sort of stuff. It's creators... Pretty good effort. Yeah, it's creators said it was being shut down because there were now there were now no good places to put the webcam. You can go and have a look at this at fogcam.org if you want to go and have a look and see what's going on at the university, fogcam.org. But you better hurry. 25 years. Yeah, it's it's getting ditched on the 30th of August. So, yeah, you got a week left. <laughs> Jeff- I couldn't get a webcam to stay up for a couple of days before it starts giving me grief and I've got to restart the thing. Yeah, it's not a bad – I suppose it's not a bad resolution. Probably not. Well, it's at night time. It's hard to tell. I might come back to, like, well, later on. What time is it over there? Oh, 2.50 a.m. Oh, if I come back tomorrow morning, you might be able to get a daylight shot. Uh, it said uh, Jeff Swartz who with Dan Wong set up the webcam, said it would go offline on the 30th of August. Swartz said he was inspired to set up the camera by what is believed to be the first ever live webcam, which was set at the Cambridge University 93 to watch a com- communal coffee pot. I think we've done a story on that one as well. The Cambridge coffee cam was shut down in 2001. 
So yeah, it's the, conti the oldest continuous webcam. Well, there you go. So uh, yeah, tune in fogcam.org <laughs> and watch the frivolities, the fun frivolities of it all. Um, yeah, cool. What are they going to do after twenty five years when they shut down the oldest continuous Aussie Tech Heads podcast? Ah, oh, we'll still be going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to will the hosting job to someone, bequeath it. You're gonna have to, yes. have to pay someone to take it off your hands. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. Joe comes back, he can do it for seven weeks, and you can have the time off. Yeah, swap him. Well, that'd be good. That'd be swap good him. to have seven weeks off. I reckon. <laughs> um, what else you got? I'm, I'm nearly. We're nearly I've got at a couple. The end. Of, I've got a couple of little. Yeah, I've got a couple. Like I said, they're all short stories. I've got one here that says, "Beware of cloned Facebook profiles. Protect yourself." Ooh, Another yeah. big story, but just they're just creating awareness because it's getting worse and worse. You people need to know to go into their Facebook accounts and switch them from public, um, you know, public to friends only. You know, viewing your friends list and stuff like that because mm. there is people, you know, spoofing these Facebook pages and pretending that they're, you know, people that they aren't just so they can get accepted into the friends pages. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, so, so the key for that is to is to go in and make sure you set your profile friends list to friends only. Only mm. friends be my friends list and my pages and things like that. And profiles with pictures of big melons, they're all fake. All right? With all what? Big melons? Big melons. They're fake profiles. Don't don't get sucked into them. If they've got big melons? Mm. What's how they get you in? Oh, by saying they've got big melons. <laughs> yes. So watermelons? No. Just other, other, other types of melons. Well, I always, I always check to see. I always check to see how many mutual friends they got. Always. Yeah. Well, look, I got one from a, a lady, one of my mum's friends, the other day, and oh, I went because you know how you preview the profile. So I previewed it and went, well, "This doesn't look. This looks rubbish." It was just a picture of some Ray Ban ad, and I went, "Well, but anyway, okay, I'll accept it." And then, uh, and then that started getting shared around my bloody place, and I went, "Oh, that's no good." So I just just de delisted it defriended it but yeah but you got to be careful if it looks sus just don't do it like i don't i don't really friend anyone i don't really know in real life really mm -hmm. unless I, I, I spoke to them on the phone or um whatever but no I, I just keep it pretty quiet pretty tight you know i'm not one mm -hmm. of these people that goes and has two hundred thousand friends mm. wouldn't know what to do with them all oh andrew just says on facebook what do you mean they're all fake i think he thought he was popular <laughs> with all these with all these melons, <laughs> they're all fake, Andrew. Unfortunately, um, and if you could get Brett's uh, ninety-five uh, speed down on his, you could get the melons faster. Well, that's right. They come down. <laughs> he's got ninety-five down over there. That's that's amazing. Thirty-eight up. Mm, wow, yeah, that's what I'm on, on Telstra. There you go. I oh, wouldn't be to the node. That'd be probably right. something else, though. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no. So, watch yourself on Facebook. They reckon. Hmm. Yes, yes. There's and I had another one too that's kind of similar to that on the uh, the Instagram side of things. Instagram, there's people sharing a viral post again, saying that there's a deadline. Uh, what's it say? Deadline today. Uh, what's it? What is it? Uh, this week's celebrities include Usher, Pink, along with politicians and so forth. Shared identical Instagram posts warning of an alleged up and coming change to Instagram's terms of services that would, in part, afford a company broad permission to use your pictures and messages and other information how it sees fit. Everything you've ever posted becomes public from today, reads the oddly worded bot. Which includes questionable, um, uh, questionable things, blah, 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 where am I up to? Uh, and the sale of goods and treaty related. Oh, there's a whole heap of jargon here. We don't need to read all that. But it's basically saying that it's telling people that they've got a um, – where is it? There's no – um, they're saying that everything becomes public if you don't do something. What was it? Yeah, in your privacy settings. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so you've got to make sure what – But they're saying it's not true. They're saying there's no truth to this post – Facebook spokesman Stephanie Otway said in an email, uh, this isn't the first time the company had to deal with hoaxes related to copyright infringement and user privacy. In 2012, the same thing happened once before. Like, 
I wish Sorry. that wish that bloody Miley Cyrus thing was fake and to just nick off. I'm sick of hearing so about it. Saying that people again are spoofing these things and threatening people to, you know, they're going to put all your images and your private posts up oh, and, yeah. and oh. sell them to everyone. I've had I've had emails saying that they've looked at me through my webcam while I was abusing myself, and if I don't pay them, they're going to send all the pictures to someone. Is that when you're on your knees? Yeah. Begging? Church whipping you. <laughs> That's right. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, I just, I just read it and I went, "What?" I need to go for it. <laughs> Send them out, <laughs> you idiots. Yeah. So, um, all right. So this week, what's happened this week in tech history? We'll go through a couple of these just to finish off with. In August, yeah, I've got the biggest, the biggest story of the day. What is it? Google updates to a cleaner, simpler Play Store design. But you jumped off and went I'm to off. App, but you wouldn't know. Well, that was my big complaint. Now they've changed. I'm too late. It's too late. No, I wouldn't change. I have to. I might Play have Store to. has got the, the Play Store has gotten a big visual makeover. The oh. company announced today with changes that, and I've already looked on my phone. It's already changed with changes that include a cleaner look and feel, with new navigation, an easy way to see the app information and more. Most notably, however, it is that Google has taken a page from Apple's playbook. Uh, with the priority given to its two distinct sections for apps and games. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It's just a nicer interface on the iOS. I can't even show. Have you seen it? No, no, I've got it up there on the screen. Is that the, it? The, the Google, the Google one that they've just updated. Yeah, that's it. Uh, where are you? I'm looking. Yeah, that's the one. It's a big visual makeover, uh, oh, yeah. cleaner look and feel. Uh, Google's taking it, yeah, blah, blah, blah. The reason is in keeping with the blah, blah, blah. The Play Store has already broken out apps and games before today, but they have been part of the much larger, well, there's not much. God, there's a lot of a lot of crap just to say it's changed. A lot of words just to say the Play Store changed. Oh, they've got to sell it. Yeah. They've got to get above all this fake news and make it look real. Oh, well, this is right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, that's good. That's good. But, see, I don't know. I think it's, it even comes down to the font and everything. It's just, oh, I don't know, Jordan. It's just, I'm just, I'm just happier. I'm back to being happy. So that's good. <laughs> Even though it's on a success. But look, let's uh, get into the tech history, and then we can, then we can uh, get out of here. Uh, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna treat treat you or think of you the same way, Glenn. I oh, know I've disappointed a lot of people. You oh. have. Even <laughs> Justin's like said on Facebook when you said it before. You've gone back to the dark side. Oh, I know. But that's the You're disappointing all your fans. Yeah, well, look, it's only the... Uh, I went back for group messages, to be honest. <laughs> now, NASA loses... What? Hey? You went back what? For group messages. Group messages. Yeah, well, see, you know, I read another article this week that Microsoft has just released, or about to release, maybe, it's a, a SMS Organizer, which is a new text application oh, app for, um, for yeah. uh, Android, and it organises all your SMS messages into current categories. And nice, nice. All organised into the relevant topics that you're talking oh, about. Oh, look, you know, iOS Are will come out with that next year. No, they'll, they'll copy that. They'll copy that. Oh, yeah, take long. IOS, mate. yeah. yeah they'll, they'll take And you know what? Then they'll advertise it and say they came up with a new idea. Yep, that's right. Yep, good old Tim Cookie. Now, look, let's get through this uh, stuff. The... Mars Observer was lost August 21st, 1993, uh, three days before it was to enter the orbit around Mars. So I think nowadays, well, they're trying to get it back, aren't they? Oh, not get that back, but get back to Mars. Trump wants to go to Mars. Uh, in the, the 20th of August, 1911. Mars, Trump, did you say? Oh, not him personally. No, I don't know. I Trump, I thought he was going to hop in the car and go with... Um, with um, What's his name from Tesla? Oh, Elon. Yeah, no. Trump wants to go to Greenland. I don't know about Mars. That's too far for him. (laughs) Uh, The first commercial telegram sent around the world, August 20, 1911. So there you go. August 19, 2004, Google holds its initial IPO, which is putting it up on the stock exchange. Google shares closed that day at $100. I think they're now 1000 aren't they? That's crazy. August, Isn't it? August 18, 8, 1947, Hewlett Packard was incorporated. 1947. So this is nine years after they sold their first products from their garage in Palo Alto. Everything happens in Palo Alto. 
doesn't it? Hewlett and Packard got their start in 1938 by producing oscillators used to test audio equipment. Since selling eight of the first oscillators to Disney for use in preparing movie theatres for the movie Fantasia, HP had grown to one of the largest technology companies in the world. Here we go. We'll do the, we'll do the, this one will be our, we'll do two more. The first CD, first music CD, August 17, 1982, The Visitors by ABBA becomes the world's first commercial CD manufactured. Of course it was ABBA. Yeah. Uh, so it was, yeah, what else does that say? Which was on the of the phone. So it was designed to be the successor of the phonograph record. By the time the CD went on sale in November of that year, 1982, about 150 titles had been produced. And I'll tell you a story. Remember uh, Mark that used to be on the show? I remember, because I went to school with Mark, and I remember when we went to school, the CDs were coming out, right? And whatever, however much they were. But because he's a real music head, you know, he loves his music. Are you that young? Yeah. <laughs> he loved his you music. You just started going to school when the CDs came out. No, I was at, I was probably finishing school when the CDs came out. <laughs> so, the, the uh, yeah, but anyway, so... You go around Mark's place, you have all these CDs, you have shelves full of them. I was like, let's listen to them. He goes, oh, I've got a player. He goes, I'm just buying them. <laughs> it's a, no, I'm the same. I'll, play them, I'll get them when I get the player. I'll play them when I get the bags, player. Bags and bags of them, not worth anything now, because I used to DJ many years ago. I used to buy two, you know, half my wages every week. Mm. But there's a lot of stuff that isn't on the streaming services, though. There is a, a few songs. I noticed a lot of old Australian songs, like from the 70s. And 60s it's and 70s. Hmm. So you wouldn't have that sort of stuff. But a lot of those songs, you can't find well, you them. You never know. You never know. <laughs> I've got out, out in that, my bags of DJ stuff. Who knows? Oh, look, the, the goodies just keep Hundreds. coming. The goodies just keep coming with these uh, on this days. This one's probably just inside the week. So we'll finish with that one. And it's the first Internet Explorer, August 16, 1995. Microsoft introduces Internet Explorer. What a dog which at the time was a modified version of Spyglass Mosaic. Never heard of it. Probably too young. Which Microsoft had licensed later when Microsoft began including IE for free with Windows. Spyglass sued Microsoft for not paying what they felt were the proper royalties. Microsoft settled for $8 million. With an M. That's not much in these these days, is it? $8 million. And they've been living with it ever since. Yeah, well, yeah, I think Spyglass must have had the last laugh. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they probably wouldn't own up to it now. They'd probably say, no, that wasn't us. Mm. We, never, we, never, we never started Internet Explorer. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no, they don't want nothing to do with it. Nobody does. Yeah, nobody does. Nobody does. You can slap a new badge and a new name on it, but people are still going to complain about it. Well, they did. They called it Edge. And the people yeah. still- <laughs> still- you live- and and that was the worst thing ever because now people think they're living on the edge. You know? Yeah, look, edge, edge, look, edge is all right. I don't mind edge, but uh, I, but I'll tell you, no, that's, that's, that's- you know, it's all to help them build up their Bing search engine. You know, like if they've mm. got that installed as the default browser in Windows, then every time they do a search, it goes back through Bing, and that's where they make their big bucks. You know, mm. yeah, so- that's, that's right. All right. Well, I think. We might. Uh... I did have one more little thing just to top it off. I think it's the last of my tabs. Yep. This might kind of tongue twist me a little bit on some of the words, like you did in your um, article earlier. Well, there we go. It says a new breakthrough could soon revolutionise the design of almost every optical instrument in use today, including cameras, eyeglasses, and telescopes. Combining uh, recent developments in artificial um, muscle and flat lens technologies, a team of researchers at the Harvard John A. Uh, Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences have created a new lens that functions a lot like the human eye. Not only is the instrument capable of focusing in real time, thanks to its um, elastoma, elastoma, mm, right. and elastoma muscle, it features none of the bulk of the traditional uh, spherical, is it spherical lens? Uh, it can even do something, some things the human eye can't, including adjusting for astigmatism um, and image shift uh, to variables that led to uh, blurry vision. So this is like a contact lens and can go in your eye hmm. and correct, correct all your uh, visuals. But it's the, the, the thing about it, I think from reading the story earlier, is that it's not as bulky as the technology that we've currently got that can do that. Right. Okay, like that really sounds good. 
really small and really thin. You'd barely notice it's there. It's a new wave of technology. So that sees the future of eyewear being pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, we all know we need – look, everyone's got glasses. I've always said, you know, why can't we – why can't we – you know, no one's invented it yet. Or maybe they've tried, but, you know, why can't I have my prescription lens on my phone? Mm. Does so it I don't have to glasses to read my phone. But doesn't that – yeah, but, it ha- but then – Why can't I get a screen protector in my lens, in, you know? Yeah, I don't know if they, but the phone would be too far away, doesn't it? The lens would have to be close to your eye, wouldn't it? Yes. But I mean, I saw on eBay the other day, you can buy glasses with a little adjustment thing on the side that adjusts the focus just on the side of your lenses. Yeah, right. That's all right. We've got, we've got tech, technology. Why can't we adjust our, yeah. our, our, our glasses to suit our eyes ourselves? I, I want the x-ray happening, x-ray vision. When's that coming out? Oh, oh that'll come out when, when you get... Um, just a flick of a button and you've got abs mm-hmm. and muscle. Then I'll be accepting all those fake profiles. Yeah. So. <laughs> Including, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All the fake profiles and all the fake melons along with it. That's right, exactly. All right, you can, don't forget the uh, AussieTechRadio.com, uh, tune in radio app, cross platform, Apple, Android, wherever. PC, Mac, and just, uh, you can stream Wall to Wall 24-7 Australian podcast. We're looking for more to put on there. I'm thinking of maybe broadening the uh, the scope here because uh, some of the podcasts have faded and uh, we're not getting too many in the, in the you know, the roll around. So if you've got a podcast that you want to list, want me to put up there, and if as long as it's not Creative Commons or whatever, and then we can, we're allowed to re, uh, re-broadcast it, well, let me know and I'll see. think about putting it in there. But maybe try and relate it a bit to tech. Uh, that's about it for us this week. Uh, get us on the and Twitter. Also, uh, also, you should mention, Glenn, that if anyone wants to come on the show. Yep, a mic and a webcam and wait till we get our audio suite. But I think... Um, yeah, and then, you know, a couple of fresh new faces here and there. Never goes astray. If you've got something you want to say. Mm, exactly. All right, so I think that... will say. <laughs> mm, that'll do us. Uh, look, the Sharks are on the, tomorrow, Saturday night. Well, sat- tomorrow, Saturday afternoon. So let's hope they have a win because we are desperate. We need to stay in this eight. Otherwise, come finals, I'll be a very sad host if we're not in the finals. All right, thanks, Jordan. Thanks for coming in. It's been great to talk to you again. And... Uh, Thanks for everyone watching on the Facebook. I got my I got my comments working. I just had to turn the phone up to portrait. Didn't and thanks to our Y car sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the comments didn't want to work in the landscape mode. So there you go. Well, there's not really a lot of com. There's a few comments. I think I've read most of the um, mm. most. Of- well, uh, see, there, there's a Xiaomi one Apple zero because I could do landscape comments on the Xiaomi, on the Android. Okay. Yes, no, you do. Facebook comments. You, you still have got the. F- yeah, uh, Brett asked if you have to wear glasses to be on the show. Yes, you do. And I think I... Oh, you can see the comments now, can you? Glenn, there you go. I can. And look, I did have oh, I did have some spare glasses, just in case someone came they didn't have any. But I can't find just them. Just use the, use the digital ones, you know, the augmented ones that you just bring them up on your webcam. I had some of those. <laughs> you can have, like, Princess... Gla- what, what's her name? The... Okay. Uh, Dane Edna glasses or something. Oh God! Show my age talking about Dane Edna. Yeah, I had a um, I had a pair. cartoon ones. We'll just wear those. I had a couple of pairs of these. If I get a big, if I get a picture for you, I had a couple of pair of those in the in the drawer. You can borrow a couple of those. <laughs> if you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. They remind me of that. They remind me of that. Um, what was that? That guy that almost got famous for having a party in his street with the blonde hair and the glasses, a young kid. Oh, yeah. Got gate crashed years yeah. ago. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember the name. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Tim. And people still talk about him to this day. He's still half famous, you know, with his yeah. glasses just from his gate crashed party. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. The if you wear those glasses Someone? on the show, you might get gate crashed. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, glasses and all Brett, good on you, Brett. Well, let us know. Brett said he's gonna yeah, he's gonna come on one of these days. All right. Are, are, did you have? Are you the one with the ninety five down and the forty up? It's the only way you're gonna get on this show. Yeah, he is actually. <laughs> all right. Maybe he should host it at that speed. Yeah, probably. All right. Let's get out of here. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks everyone for watching on the Facebook and on the YouTube with a with a nice little uh, watermark all over the place for this episode and uh, on the uh, audio as well. 
Good stuff. Yeah, watermelon Melon Marks. All right. Good on you, everyone. We'll uh, see you next time. Cheers for now and bye-bye. Good night. Adios. Amigos. Amigos.